And furthermore, we don't have the eyewitness accounts of the people to whom these appearances supposedly occurred. We have hearsay, and we have no real understanding of the circumstances, if any, if these actually existed. What were the psychological conditions? We know that people hallucinate in a variety of ways. We know that people can have visions on a variety of circumstances. I myself once hypnotized an atheist friend to have him have a very vivid visit from Jesus Christ. It scared the bejesus out of him. It was so vivid. But certainly, uh, no one would suppose that it was real, that somebody could have taken a photograph of Jesus there. And uh, we just don't have enough evidence, despite the very large book that my opponent has written on this subject, we just do not have enough reliable evidence to form a psychiatric opinion as to just what these people uh, did see. We don't even know who the people were. A lot of this centers around the disciples, who I think are just as legendary as Jesus. And I should say that uh, there is no convincing evidence that Jesus was an historical figure. And the disciples are even more shadowy. They seem to be perhaps um, symbolic for the, ten, for the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, and they, of course, in turn were symbolic of the 12 signs of the zodiac. There was quite a bit of astrology at the beginning of Christianity. It was a New Age cult. It ushered in the age of Pisces and the end of the age of Aries, the lamb. And so the first symbol was the fish. Now, <clears throat> with regard to the origin of the Christian faith, uh, the idea that it spreads so suddenly, this is a legitimate question uh, for scientific investigation. Uh, again, we have a lot of ideas, but as with so many things from the ancient world, a conclusive understanding is not yet available. But it certainly does not require a miracle to suppose uh, that, uh, that, that there was something magical behind Christianity in order for it uh, to spread. Uh, certainly, once it became the official religion of the Roman Empire, we need ask no further questions as to why it succeeded. <clears throat> but we see a similar thing in the spread of Islam. Islam spread extremely rapidly uh, after the Prophet Muhammad um, uh, wrote to the Quran. Um, so I don't see any reason that we must believe in, in miracles or something supernatural uh, to account for the success of Christianity in the market in the marketplace of, of human needs and human values, it obviously had something useful to sell. And uh, so it, it spread. Now, getting back to uh, what is an atheist, I'm sorry that my opponent uh, keeps thinking that I should try to prove a universal negative. But I would say <clears throat> that the idea of atheists, theists, and agnostics as three categories is sort of an old-fashioned idea. Uh, once upon a time, it is the case that atheists said there is no God, theists said there is a God, and agnostic says, I don't know, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But the problem with that was that <clears throat> we saw that the ideas of gods evolved to such sophistication that they became meaningless. Let me explain. They, the gods in which people claim to believe nowadays are so ephemeral so elusive that you cannot define them really and you cannot imagine a way that you could test for their existence or not. Once upon a time when God lived on Mount Olympus we were able to check out whether he really did or not. But a lot of people climbed Mount Olympus and so the priests got wise and they said well you know Zeus is permanently out to lunch he doesn't live here anymore. And so the God idea today is, is just totally impalpable. You cannot grasp it. You cannot test it. I could do a simple test, say, well, if there is a God within the next uh, two minutes, he will strike me dead here on the podium, and that will be a sign to you that there is a God. Now, I'm relatively confident that's not going to happen. And when I am still here talking about it two minutes and two seconds from now, and I say, well, I guess that shows there was no God, you will say, well, no, you know, my God isn't going to get involved with your silly ideas, with your silly tests. My God is above that sort of thing. 
It's sort of like the indetectable gremlins on Saturn, however. You can't imagine a way that you could test for the indetectable gremlins on Saturn. If you flew there with the best gremlinometers that NASA could provide, you still wouldn't find them because they are, by definition, undetectable. And the God of Christianity has evolved into something that is essentially undetectable, and we cannot do anything with it. Now, that is not really a weakness for the atheist. The atheist now says all of these statements about God are basically meaningless. We can't, we can't handle them in any meaningful way. Now, lest you think that this is a weakness for the atheist, I would challenge you with this idea. Let me say I've just been convinced by my opponent that, yes, indeed, there is a God, and I'm it. And, moreover, I created all of you just three minutes ago with all the false memories thinking that you actually came here for the beginning of the show. Now, <clears throat> can you disprove that? No, you can't. Uh, you cannot imagine a way, really, that you could disprove that because everything you would do, I could claim, was actually part of my divine intent. You could say, well, I will torture you into confessing that you are not a god. And I would say, well, I'll pretend to be tortured, but I'll get even with you after you die. You're going to burn for that. Uh, you could perhaps... Uh, uh, get me to say something else that would seem compromising. But in my divine knowledge, I would be just pretending all of this. I might even pretend to die if you uh, chose to torture me excessively. But I would, get, I would get even with you somewhere later on in eternity. Now, what would you do with this? You can't handle that. And so atheism is simply the absence of God belief because it is meaningless to say that you believe in a god. We'd have to know the particulars. Now, uh, Dr. Craig's god <clears throat> does have some particulars. We are what we suppose. He began, in, he began the universe, but this creates a biblical problem, the Melchizedek problem. I think you all are familiar with Melchizedek from the uh, Epistle to the Hebrews. Um, Melchizedek, king of Salem, is king of Salem, that is, king of peace. He has no father, no mother, no lineage. His years have no beginning, his life no end. He is like the Son of God. He remains a priest for all time. Now, if Melchizedek has existed forever with no beginning, and he is part of the universe, then we have a serious problem here. Uh, if the universe is finite and that the universe began, that would mean that Melchizedek is older than the universe. And I rest at that point. We've still yet to hear any good reason to think that God does not exist. Now, don't use up my time here. Mr. Zingler says you can't prove a universal negative. That's false in the first place. Of course you can. For example, uh, uh, are, you could disprove the statement that there are polka-dotted geese. Uh, that, uh, that would be a universal negative. You can disprove that. But in, more importantly, the statement that God does not exist is not a universal negative, it's a singular negative statement. And certainly you can uh, prove negative singular statements, such as there is no planet between uh, Venus and the Earth. You can provide arguments uh, to show that a singular negative statement is true, but he hasn't done it. But he says the idea of God is so impalpable. Uh, now, look, if this is not just going to be a sort of village atheism where you say, well, I can't see and touch and hear God so he doesn't exist, uh, you've got to have a better objection than that. He, perhaps Mr. Zindler is saying, well, because God can't be verified, this is a meaningless statement that God exists or that God does not exist. Indeed, he seems to indicate this in some of his writings. This is based, however, upon a verificationist theory of meaning, which is simply false and self-refuting. 
number one, this type of theory of meaning would not only eliminate